Well, hey y'all, I hope you're having a great day. This is Live and Laugh with Linda. If you're new, I'm Linda. And on this channel, we try to celebrate life in all aspects. We believe that life is a precious gift and we're determined to try to keep the joy in our hearts. Proverbs 17, 22 is my motto. A joyful heart does good like a medicine. Listen, I would love to have you join us. Come on and go on this journey with us. Uh, feel free to subscribe, like, and share, and returning people, yep, you, you know the drill. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's just dive right in. This is session number four in our How to Pray series. Okay, y'all, let's, let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to lead us. Lord, we just praise you today. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to come and lead, guide us, and anoint this time that we're going to spend together talking about prayer and talking about connecting with the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so the, the purpose is practical tips for a deeper prayer life. Uh, Y'all, the, 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 you got to power up with prayer because the truth of the situation is the more you pray, the more power you will have in your life. And I can guarantee you that as a lifetime uh, of prayer that I've had. So let's just do a little recap. In session one was very basic, very fundamental, and the whole purpose was to learn three things. It was in three sections. What is prayer? Why do we pray? And thirdly, how do we pray? So I'm trying to give you some practical ideas. I don't, I'm not lofty. I don't have a theology degree. I'm not a pastor. I'm not any of that. But I'll tell you what I really am. I'm a God seeker, and I sure enough do love the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the only qualification you need. Amen. Somebody say amen. I apologize if you hear my dogs are barking, but they're, they're just going to bark. But we're just going to ignore them. In. So our theme scripture for number one was Romans 12, 11, and 12. And the last four words of those, that passage says, be constant in prayer. Prayer is not complicated. It's not hard to do. You talk to God like you talk to a friend. It's a conversation. And it is my goal to try to teach you, if you don't already do it, that you should have a running conversation with God all day long. Not lofty words. It doesn't have to be anything other than you talking to God when you're in the grocery store, when in your mind, in the car, whatever. Keep that running conversation going. And I'm telling you what, it'll change your life. So in session two, what we did was, our whole point was be increasing in prayer. And our theme was 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 17. The last uh, of that scripture actually says, be increasing in prayer. Now, what does that mean? We talked about what does that mean? Does that mean that I got to stay in my prayer closet all day? I have to log in hours and hours to pray? It takes extra time and focus and all that? No, no, not at all. The conversational prayer what I talked about before will bring your relationship uh, deeper because you know what, y'all? You can't get to know someone if you don't talk to them. And that's the truth. Yep, that's the truth. But when you want to increase your prayer, I'm not talking about in minutes. I'm talking about in depth. I'm talking about when Jesus told Simon Peter, launch out into the deep. That's a step of faith. Launch out into the deep and go there. Isaiah 55 says, come all ye thirsty, come all ye who are hungry. That quest is for you. You have one qualification, and that is, are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Are you open to the idea that God could really speak to you? Well, let's do it. Buckle up and let's go. All right, so then the third session we talked about be faithful in prayer. And this one was all about requests and petitions. Y'all, this is probably the most common form of prayer that most people in the world think of. God is there like a big Santa Claus in the sky and we're supposed to go ask him for what we want and he's supposed to give it to us. Or worse yet, let's bargain for it. I'll do this if you do that. The most faith that you could ever have is taking something to God, leaving it at his feet, and be willing to accept whatever his answer is. 
whenever his answer comes as his will. That is a hard one. That's a person who's standing in faith. Our scripture was Philippians 4, 4, 7, and 8, and that's the famous scripture that says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your mind and your heart in Christ Jesus. Okay, so today we're talking about another whole form of prayer. Today is intercessions, and this is a very exciting way to pray. Um, our text is 1 Thessalonians 3.10, and that talks about uh, being uh, persevering in prayer with intercessions. Um, in Acts 12.5 is the scripture where Peter was in jail. He had been put in prison for uh, spreading the gospel. And so the church, and they, they huddle together, and it says... They fervently and persistently prayed. And if you read further in that scripture, an angel of the Lord came and opened up those gates for him. They were fervent and they were persistent. Intercession is, is, is a more proactive method of prayer. Um, and it is more focused and designed to hit the bullseye of the enemy's plans for you. And by the way, when I speak of enemy, you need to know I am talking about Satan, the devil, all of his troops he's got, all the spirits and strongholds, principalities and powers. If you don't believe it's real, you need to read your Bible, okay? Now, we're not to fear him. We serve a God who's higher than any others. Isn't that the truth? Woo! Somebody say hallelujah. But we need to be aware. We need to be aware. So it's intercession is the act of standing in the gap. That means on the front line of battle, if there's a gap, that's where you're going to stand. I'm going to fill in the gap. I'm going to fill in the gap. Intercession is almost like a football game when they have an interception where the, the, the game is going that way and somebody catches that, intercepts that ball and turn it around the other way. Intercession is me standing like this and saying to the enemy, not today, devil, you ain't getting my youngins. Uh-uh, no, turn around and go back in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what intercession is. It involves fervent, persistent, and travailing prayer. Impassioned, intense, and burning prayer. Let me give you some definition. The definition, some definitions of fervent is fiery, ardent, heartfelt, impassioned, intense, burning prayer. Persistent prayer definitions are immovable, fixed, in for the long haul, and constant. Travailing prayer is, some definitions are effort, childbirth, sometimes suffering, burdensome. This is some serious stuff, y'all. The thing about intercession is you will know when you have a call from the Lord to put yourself in this posture, okay? Uh, sometimes somebody might call you, ask to pray for, uh, you might get a lot of prayer requests from your friends and this and that, but there's sometimes one stands out. One stands out, and you make it your business to go into intercession for that prayer request. I mean, you cannot get this off your mind. In the day, in all day long, you're hearing it. You're hearing it. Lord, Lord, heal that man. Do this, whatever, and you just keep at it. You just keep at it. Uh, you do all the things. You read the Word. You write something down, and you continue because it can feel like a burden. Make sure your burden is not God's burden. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, sometimes you might even be awakened in the night and have an urge to get up and pray. Or you might just lay in the bed and pray. That's a call to intercession. Sometimes you may not even know who you're praying for. You may not even know who you're praying for. You may uh, never know. You may never know. But God will call intercessors to pray for someone maybe all the way on the other side 
of the country, or not the country, but the world anywhere. And you will never, ever know who it is. But you will feel a release when it's time to move on. Um, and that's just part of it. Now, uh, people ask, well, what do you mean? Are, are intercessors special holy people? Does I? No. I was, I was uh, visiting a church one time, and a lady came up, and uh, we were new in the town, and she introduced herself. And she, I said, hi, I'm Lynn. And she said, um, hi, I'm an intercessor. That was her introduction of herself to me. And I felt that to be kind of lofty. Uh, you know, intercession, the, the intercessors are cloaked or should be cloaked in humility. That's a hard one. Um, I do believe that those called to intercessions have gone through some of these other things that we've talked about, practical tips for a deeper life that we've been talking about up until now. And they've gotten a little deeper with God and they know him pretty well mm -hmm, as they're going along. Uh, and for that kind of person, you may get the call. I mean, look at it from God's point of view. Look at it this way. Who do you trust with your secrets? Wow, that's, that's interesting. Also, it's a lifetime adventure, y'all. It's, 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 it's a quest. It, it's not a one-time thing. It's all your life. Praise the Lord. I do want to tell one little story. And this is one time I was um, awakened in the night. This is kind of recent. So I'm going to tell you this one story. Several months back, I'm not exactly sure when, I think it was in April, somewhere along that time. I was awakened in the night. I woke up with a, it wasn't a peaceful waking up. It was like that waking up. And I stopped, you know, and, and, and now sometimes I deal with a little bit of insomnia, but it wasn't that kind of, you know, it wasn't that kind of thing. So I got up, I came on, it was about three o'clock in the morning, and I came on in the living room and I, I just began to pray. I just began to earnestly pray and I kept I kept at it and I kept at it and I kept at it. I had an urgency. I I'd, I'd get up and walk around, I'd I'd sit down, I'd pace and finally into it a little ways, I kind of just stopped and I said, "Lord, who am I praying for?" And listen, it wasn't even 10 minutes and I got a text from my sister-in-law in North Carolina that said that my brother, her husband, my brother had just had a heart attack. That is who I was praying for. Well, I want you to know that he survived. He's fine now, even more healthy than he was before. He could have died. He should have died. Lots of things had to come together. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Now, you may not always see the end, end result. You may never know. You may, you may ask. I've had many times. I didn't know who I was praying for. Uh, but I, I've, I've learned to recognize the, the, uh, the release of that. Let's talk about burdens. Um, I told you I'd just share one story, but I'm going to give one more. Uh, this was when I learned how to talk. Don't take the burden of intercession on my own shoulders. Newsflash. We don't have any power. No, we do not have any power. Don't get it in your head that your prayer is going to... No, God has the power, but he does work through vessels, and he has all through the scriptures, God worked through mankind. So about 2005 was when my son first went to Iraq in, in the war over there, and um, he was a foot soldier, and uh, he, was, he was in the thick of it. So... Um, I, I began to just think, I just, so I launched into my intercession mode. I prayed and I prayed and I, I, I was, it, it got to the point that if I, I wouldn't even sleep because I thought that if I had this kind of weird thinking that if I stopped praying something and what happened to him, okay. And I kept it up for about three weeks I wouldn't even go anywhere because I had to pray for my son. And literally, y'all, I near about made myself sick praying. I don't even know if that's something I should say, but I was not, I was, I mean, physically. And one morning I was praying and saying the, doing the thing and all the things, and I just went like this. 
And I realized I had to come to a place. So I, I literally almost collapsed onto the floor on my knees. And I said the hardest words I've ever said in my life. I said, God, please don't take my son. But if you do, I'm with you. And that's the day I learned how to take the burden off myself. Because y'all, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Yoke yourself to Jesus and not carry the battle. I will tell you that the prayers of intercessors fuel the battle that's going on up in the heavens. Prayer is a powerful thing. Power up with prayer. And we sure enough got a lot to pray about right now. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> okay, y'all. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that uh, you're ministered to. Um, but listen, y'all have a blessed day. It was my pleasure to share some of my stories with you. But y'all have a blessed day. Find something to smile about. <laughs> We're smiling because uh, the hurricane's gone. And that's a good thing. But anyway, I will see you next time. Bye now.